Welcome to this presentation of the Western Ohio Railway. In this video, we visit my dad's HO scale layout. We'll see a typical operating session, discuss the story behind the layout, and talk about my dad. More than any other video I will ever publish, I sincerely hope you will sit back, relax, and enjoy all the exciting HO scale model railroading action on the Cedarville and Western. Larry Lamb, my dad, passed away after a short illness in September 2023. Beyond being my dad, he was my friend, my sports, auto racing, and rail fanning partner. We went to all the shows together and helped each other in the hobby. Dad was always shy about sharing his layout. This video is a tribute to him and his Cedarville and Western HO scale layout. In this video, I'll cover the highlights of a typical operating session. There is a full version of this video on my Western Ohio Railway website. You can find a link to it in the description. For now, we'll start our day at the Hampton Gravel Loading Facility west of Hampton Yard. The Gravel Pit in Hampton is the main customer for the Cedarville and Western, and is what keeps the short line operating. The loading area is nothing more than some level ground along the tracks where a front loader loads hoppers. We see X Wabash Engine 573 pulling the loaded cars back to Hampton in preparation for the eastbound trip to Cedarville. Hampton Yard is the hub of activity for the Cedarville and Western. There is a small yard, an engine house, and a team track with a loading dock. In the video, we see 573 picking up a couple of boxcars from the loading dock. The NW and Western Maryland boxcars are dropped on the main long enough to return the yellow milk card to the team track. The milk car has been spotted back on the team track and out of sight. We are now ready to add the caboose for our trip east. Two blasts of the whistle and we are on our way to Cedarville. Dad's layout was small. He enjoyed short lines and switching. His layout is a nice example of what you can do in a small space. This scene east of Hampton was a favorite of his, the train snaking around an S-curve through a cut in the hills. Merwin is a small town between Cedarville and Hampton. Merwin is named for the road my dad grew up on. Merwin is nothing more than a few company houses and a highway crossing. As the shot pans, we'll see Ten Mile Creek, the rest of the name for the road my dad grew up on, Merwin Ten Mile. We arrive at the metropolis of the Cedarville and Western, Cedarville. Cedarville is where the Cedarville and Western interchanges with the Norfolk and Western. The yard belongs to the N&W, and the Cedarville and Western drops off and picks up cars from one end of the yard. For those familiar with the town of Cedarville, Ohio, you may have seen at the opening Cedarville is misspelled. The Cedarville name comes from where Dad went to college. Cedarville University is in the small Ohio town of the same name, and it is spelled with a C. 
Spelling Cedarville with an S has to do with one of my dad's first jobs. Dad worked for Western Southern Life and always said their logo was an ideal logo for a railroad. The picture inset here is my recreation of that logo for Dad's railroad. The full story about the names on the layout is that I assigned them, not Dad. Dad never named his railroad or his town. When I made this video, Dad wasn't sick. He went into the hospital about two weeks after the video was made. He was supposed to do the narration, and we'd have gone over these details at that time. From a video perspective, I needed names. It just makes describing a scene easier. So Hampton is named for where my sister lives, Merwin and Ten Mile Creek for where Dad grew up, and Cedarville is where Dad went to school. Dad did see the video and knew the names I was using. We never really discussed if he liked them or not. There was no rush prior to him going into the hospital, and when he did turn ill, it was no longer appropriate. What I do know for sure, because we did talk about this a little bit, is that he loved the video. Before he turned really sick, he talked about changes he wanted to make based on what he saw in the video. I get a lot of satisfaction knowing that he liked it. While I've been talking, 573 has been switching Cedarville Yard. The boxcars from the team track are spotted on one track. The NNW has a dedicated track for gravel and coal that the Cedarville and Western uses to exchange loaded hoppers for empties. New freight cars destined for Hampton are picked up before the outbound cars can be left in place. The empty hoppers are placed near the caboose as they are lighter than the loaded freight cars. Hampton has a small passing siding, but the Cedarville and Western has found that pushing the train back to Hampton is easier and more efficient. We'll watch 573 finish her work before departing Cedarville. We depart Cedarville westbound for Hampton. 573 makes easy work of the short train. A conductor and brakeman are on the caboose to signal the few crossings along the way. Ten Mile Creek was a scene my dad was particularly proud of. Neither of us had attempted a water scene prior to this. The results of his work are very nice.
Our train eases back into Hampton Yard. The caboose will be dropped on one of the yard tracks. Then 573 will shove the entire train back to the gravel pit to pick up the hopper we left behind earlier. It has since been loaded and needs to be switched to the front of the new empty hoppers. The box car and the tank car both need to be spotted on the team track. The N and W did us no favors as the tank car needed to be on the other side of the box car. The Cedarville and Western is required to clear the N and W yard at Cedarville as efficiently as they can, so switching the cars has to come back to Hampton. The Western Maryland box car is pushed back to the loading dock where it is coupled to the milk car we left behind earlier. Then the tank car is spotted along the driveway on the team track where it will be offloaded to tank trucks. The last switching move has 573 spot the loaded hopper car on the east end of the cut. The main line ends at the crossing near the loading facility, so spotting the empties to the back is necessary so the front loader can keep loading cars. When the day is done, 573 returns from the gravel pit light and ties down in the yard for the night. There is a long version of this video on my website. You can find the link to it in the video description. The full length video is about 45 minutes long and shows every move of the operating session. I was amazed at how well my dad's layout ran. Not a single stall or derail during the entire operating session. If you are a modeler struggling with space or resource limitations, consider a small layout with a focus topic. You'll find a lot of satisfaction, create something really nice, and learn things for future projects.